I would, actually I wouldn't go, <laughs> but um, I would do exactly what he tells me to do. My name is Jana Kay, and welcome to my Bible study channel, Flourish Evermore. Hey, y'all, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me for Bible study, for being a part of my channel, for watching videos, and I, I thank you so much for those of you that have subscribed and those of you that uh, watch and continue to come back for Bible study together and for the other videos that I put up for the make videos that I put out each month or some of the shorts that on um, the different things that I'm baking or doing each uh, month creativity wise, if that's the right way to say it. I just thank you and appreciate you. I want to let you know that you are important to me and that I really do appreciate you um, being a part of my channel. Thanks so much. All right, so let me begin with prayer. Lord, thank you for your word to us. I pray that as we uh, just look at it and study it, that you would speak to us, that your spirit would guide us and give us wisdom and understanding of who you are, who we are, and how we can be obedient. Amen. Today, we are looking at uh, Luke chapter 9, verses 23 to 36. So I'm going to get started reading. It's a long passage. I'm going to get started reading now. And he said to all, if anyone could would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. And for what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you, truly, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. Now about eight days after these sayings, he took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered, and his clothes became dazzling white. And behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep. But when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. And as he was saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid, and they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent and told no one in those days of anything of what they had seen. All right. Uh, again, as I always say, uh, if you would like to read in other versions, please do so. Uh, that's one of the things that I do as I study is look at the different versions because of translating from one language to another. Uh, various words work in various situations and um, it gives us to me a bigger insight as to what is being said and uh, gives me better understanding a lot of times. So first question, is what is the passage saying about God? And I'm going to pick out three things 
that I see in this passage. First of all, if we go towards the end in verse 35, we learn that Jesus is God's son. He is the chosen one, the one God has chosen, has planned to redeem us, to save us, to make us right with himself. And he has authority. God says, listen to him. He has authority to speak and for us to follow him. Second of all, Jesus is glorious. God is glorious. And by glory, yes, we see that his clothes were dazzling white. But what that portrays, as we see when back in the Old Testament, when Moses asked to see God's face, and he was like, no, because if you see my face, you will die. But I will show you the train of my robe, the end of me, the back of me as I pass by. And Moses ended up with this glowing, dazzling face. What it is that, that he sees and what we see, what the disciples are seeing here is the fullness of God's character, of Jesus's attributes. We see, the disciples are seeing who he truly is, holy, pure, righteous. Um, and so, so Jesus is glorious. He is. And the third thing that stood out for me is that Jesus is not ashamed of those who follow him. As we learn um, from verse 26, it says, For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed. But the opposite of, is true. If we follow him, if we uh, are not ashamed to be connected, that's what ashamed or shame means, to not want to be connected with. Uh, if you're ashamed of somebody, you're like, mm, I am not with them. And the opposite is true. We are excited, proud to be connected with Jesus. Then he will be glad to be connected to us. So he will not be ashamed of those who follow him. He will say, I am with that person. I am with fill in your name. I am with Jana Kay. And uh, I just love that about, about Jesus. All right, second question. What do you learn about people? What does this passage say about people? And the first thing I think it says is that we need to be all in. I am with Jesus. So as what I said earlier about he is with those who follow him, he wants us as people to be all in with him, to be with him and believe that his words are truth. Because again, in verse 26, it says, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words, we are to follow him and believe that his words are truth truth. And then, of course, we see uh, at the beginning in um, verse 23, to be a follower, there are three things that we need to do as followers. First of all, we need to deny ourselves. The New Living Translation says, give up selfish ways. We are to quit being selfish and want to do it our way and follow him who loves us most and has the best plans, who is holy and righteous and good and pure and follow him because he cares for us. So deny our selfish ways and follow him. 
and take up our cross. Look, the cross back then, when the disciples heard it, the cross was uh, the death penalty, was punishment. And um, to them, that's what it meant. Oh, that means die. And when we take up our cross daily, it means that we are dying to self, our selfish ways, but that we might face suffering. And many during those days, and even today, in our world today, are martyred because of their faith in Jesus. And sometimes that is what it means to take up our cross, to be willing to die or suffer for him. And the third thing to be a follower means to follow, means to walk in his footsteps, do what Jesus does, be obedient to him. So I was, as I was thinking of this, I was thinking of the show that uh, where Bear Grylls, and many of you may have seen the show, where he takes uh, famous people, whether that's actors or musicians or even um, famous people in sports, and he takes them through the survival course. And he tells them exactly what to do, what they need to do to stay safe, and they follow him. I have never seen a show where any one of them looks at him and says, you know, Bear, your way seems okay, but really, I'd rather go over here and do it this way. No, they, they are a lot of times afraid, and they do exactly what he tells them to do, and they make it. They actually survive uh, because he is leading them. And it's the same way with Jesus. His way is right and perfect for us. And we just need to follow. Yeah, if you read that and think about Bear Grylls, and would you be like those famous people? If he took you out, would you do what Bear tells you to do? I would. Actually, I wouldn't go. <laughs> but um, I would do exactly what he tells me to do. And Jesus is even more so, more so right, good, holy, pure, and loves us even more than anyone uh, could ever love us. All right. Um, before I get to the third question, I just want to add that this is a long passage, but what I have seen in the verses on the transfiguration, so verses 28 to 36, kind of backs up and supports what is in uh, the first verses, verses 23 to 27. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean. First of all, um, we are following an amazing Savior. He is full of glory, and as we spoke about, he is holy and right and pure and perfect. He is unlike any other God, being, person we could ever follow. He is God. And in verse 26, we see that um, it says, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory, in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. And so we see in that part, he is full of glory. He is going to return in glory. And then in the transfiguration, which happened Eight days after these sayings, we see that the disciples see Jesus in glory. His clothing is dazzling white, and they saw his glory. Second of all, 
uh, gaining the whole world and losing or forfeiting self. So it's spoken about in verses 26 and 27 that when we try to gain the world, we try to live the way the world uh, says we should live, we actually forfeit ourselves. And the disciples, to me, saw this firsthand when they saw Moses and Elijah. They appeared in glory. They were obedient to God. Even in the Old Testament, when they had to follow the laws, yes, they weren't perfect. Moses did mess up, we see that. And Elijah did become fearful and let fear kind of rule his heart at times. But they were obedient as much as any human could be. They were obedient to God and faithful to him. And they were with them in heaven. They were, they appeared to the disciples in their glorious body, their glorious state. And so when we follow Jesus, we have that hope. We know Jesus. We know hope because we see if they are in their new glorious body, we as believers who follow Jesus will be as well. Third of all is that Jesus's words are truth. Um, in verse 26, he says, don't be ashamed or those who are ashamed of him and his words he will also be ashamed of. He won't be connected to. We want to be connected to Jesus and his words because his words are truth. And then in verse 35, God backs that up by saying, listen to my son, listen to him. His words are important and they must be obeyed. So I love how Jesus teaches, in, and we see that in verses 23 to 37, and then eight days later, it's backed up by the transfiguration. So, third question, how can I obey? And I, for me, the importance of proclaiming Jesus. No, I don't mean standing out on the street and shouting, I am with Jesus. I am with him. That's, that's not what I mean. But when push comes to shove, when in particular situations that arise where I have to stand up and say, yes, I am a Christ follower. No, I can't live that way, the way of the world, because that is not pleasing to my Savior, then that's what I need to do. Am I going to do it perfectly every time? No. Even Peter didn't. We know at the crucifixion just before that he denied Jesus three times. But Jesus restored him, forgave him, and commissioned him to shepherd the people when Jesus returned to the Father. And so I need to stand up and, and live the life of a Christ follower and say, yes, I am with Jesus. And also to listen to his words and be obedient to his words. Again, I'm not going to do it perfectly. Um, but I love 1 John 1, 9, that, he, that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. He's faithful and just. He's right to forgive us because we are followers of Jesus. If you are a Christ follower, God will forgive. And he's faithful to do that every time 
we confess when we mess up, but to try. That's what growing to be more like Jesus is all about, is hearing his words and being obedient. How will you obey today? Is there anything uh, that you feel like God is leading you to obey that you would like to share with us in the comments below? Would love to hear about that. Fourth question, as always, is who can you tell? And I hope, uh, as with me, that God puts people on our hearts and we have the opportunity to do this Bible study or share what we have learned from this study together. So thanks for joining me. I'm going to close in prayer. Lord, thank you for your word. I pray that you would help me uh, to hear your word, be obedient to your word, uh, help me to stand boldly, and when pressured to do what the world does that I know is not pleasing to you, to say no, I can't because I am with Jesus. Uh, I pray that you would give me boldness, that you would give me um, the courage to do that. And Lord, I thank you for the hope that we have seen where Moses and Elijah appeared in glory because they have been in heaven with you, with the Lord, with God. And I pray that that would give us hope that no matter what happens, what circumstances surround us, when we trust in you, when we are followers, we will be uh, in heaven. We will have eternal life. So thank you for the hope that you give us. Thank you for the hope that we have, that you are with us. Your spirit guides us and teaches us as we are living our lives in this world today. I thank you for that hope as well. And I pray all these things in the precious name, in the precious character, the holiness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining me for Bible study, and I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.